Hello. Hello, welcome. Uh, I am Fulia Erdemci, the director of SCORE, and uh, Andrea Phillips, uh, uh, co-curator of uh, uh, the symposium for the ones who are not uh, here with us yesterday. Uh, welcome. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Niels van uh, Beek uh, is a curator from SCORE, and uh, he was the one who worked with the Yes Man for the Yes Lab. And uh, yesterday I mentioned about the Yes Lab and uh, their uh, strategies and tactics uh, uh, against the uh, uh, housing uh, uh, ranting uh, regulations. And uh, today, uh, uh, he wanted to, uh, yesterday I told that I cannot give any explanations because the tactics uh, are proceeding in real life so that we cannot give away the secret of the tactics. But today, uh, he said, yes, it's already in the uh, uh, papers, uh, already the politicians even reacted it, so uh, we can give a small uh, uh, explanation about that. So what you have experienced was uh, uh, the uh, outcome of the Yes Lab, uh, uh, working with uh, activist artists, and uh, a, a, a group of uh, residents from a very specific neighborhood uh, in, the, in Amsterdam who has uh, an ongoing court case on rental issues. So anyway, uh, uh, welcome again. Um, uh, actually, uh, Andrea uh, will give a small uh, summary of yesterday for, uh, for the ones who are not here. Uh, it was uh, such a heated day. Uh, the energy level was uh, really high. It's a pressure uh, cooker, or maybe we can say a, an incubation room. Uh, uh, the potential of transformation was there. New ideas are coming, new proposals are coming. And uh, 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 yesterday, uh, uh, we all felt like uh, some ideas, the new proposals are appearing, and I hope that today we'll continue uh, to this. And uh, maybe... Thank you, Fulia. Yes. Um, I, I'm not going to try and cover everything that was said yesterday, um, um, so I just want to summarize a few of the ideas that came up. Um, I'm going to kind of put them in my terms, so forgive me, the speakers, if I distort your, um, your statements, um, but also for it, because I think there are a few people who weren't here yesterday, um, so this is also um, to kind of catch you up so that we can carry on the process. As Fully said, it was an incredibly intense day, um, and it was a very long day, so thank you everybody for sticking with it. We also have a long day today, but we have a treat at the end, which is a DJ and some more food and things, so you know. Bear with us again. We have a very exciting program. Um, but yesterday, the, 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 the kind of macro issues that emerged for me were very much about, um, could be summarized in two ways. The first um, was a, a, um, a set of questions that came up continuously about what role and position one could play as a citizen, an actor, within scenarios of transformation of social housing. Uh, we had a series of questions about artists' role within it, what artists can do. Martha Rosler suggested that actually the, uh, an artist's role is always to do with providing symbolic value and using the symbolic power of art to change ideas. There are other people that would take a very po different position from that, and I think we'll be hearing about a few more of them today. Um, the, um, uh, there were another set of questions very much about as a, as a citizen, but also as an activist, as a, as, a, as a producer of social space, what do you, where do you use, where, where do you intervene, and at what scale do you intervene? This for me was epitomized most clearly in the debate between Adri, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, Duvenstein, it's, yeah, we know who Davis I'm talking time. about. That was fine. <laughs> and um, Miguel Robres Duran, who talked with Arno van Roosmalen from Strom yesterday about the relation uh, from very different positions. So Adri is a politician, and he's also um, has been extremely involved in the development of social housing in Imera, but also private public 
housing, so he's also developing mixed use and mixed economic models for developing housing in, in, in Almera, sorry, not Imera, that's the housing corporation. And um, he talked very um, positively about these models being the new ways in which citizens can achieve social change through forms of co-production. This is a very, um, in, 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 on one level, this is a, very, a line that, as a British person, I recognize as, as, as a line that I would call a new labor line. And on the other hand, Miguel talked about his, um, his experience of being part of the Occupy movement, again, something that we will very much return to today, um, working outside of the system, working with new forms of sociality and new forms of communication that bypass or move around the structures that um, current governments in the West put in place to enable citizenly um, co-production, if you will. Okay, so these are two very different positions. The other question was at what level we think about um, housing in relationship to the, to the making of the social. Do we um, recognize that uh, it's important to go ahead and start developing new forms of social housing using the current models, or do we actually understand the problem of social housing as connected into a web of um, capital development that needs to be destroyed in order to reformulate new things? And this came across in many, many, many of the presentations yesterday. For me, most tellingly, Don Mitchell talking about the idea of um, how one takes up space in a way that involves not owning property within the city. In his discussion very, at the very beginning of yesterday about tent cities and about their historic and contemporary proliferation, the connection between tent cities made by communities of homeless people and the tent cities that we are now seeing in the Occupy movement at the moment within many of the capitals across the world and elsewhere, not elsewhere in the world. I mean, there aren't tent cities on Mars, I don't think, but maybe there are. Maybe that's where we should go. Um, but not only cities, there are many other places that are using the strategies and tactics of Occupy as well. So the question really is, you know, can we, can we really think about individualized units of social housing and their transformation into, into, into structures that allow real equality of access, can we do that without understanding and therefore rethinking the relationship between the provision of social housing and the concept of property in itself. This was also echoed across the day. Uh, finally, to say that there were also some very kind of pragmatic discussions about alternative economic formations. Very much, um, this, this, was, um, this, this was very much foregrounded in both the, um, the work of Fallen Fruit, which was talked about by Matthias yesterday, and the work of Joanna and Amelia, who were talking about a project that they've been developing with Manuel Castells in Catalonia, homage to Catalonia too, whereby there is lots and lots and lots of research going on at, that, at the moment about how alternative economies and alternative understandings of use value, economic value, and exchange value might need to be reformulated in order for us to really understand and therefore reject certain forms of valuation that we have um, internalized, can we say. Um, let me think. Um, Matthias from Fallen Fruit uh, used a wonderful um, term yesterday um, in response to a question from the floor after his talk. He talked about um, understanding the pitiful privilege of the artist. And I think that's very interesting, that if we go from a position where we all understand the historically embedded uh, pitiful privilege that so society gives to the artist, okay, whether the artist maybe wants it or not, um, how do we reformulate that? So the concept of the privileged, autonomous, um, authoritative position that is separated from sociality remix, is remixed and re-emerges as a very different kind of actor, a very different kind of acting. Um, I think that probably previews some of the things that we talked about today. There were many other ideas that came up, many very practical solutions, very many very interesting historic perspectives from China, from histories of social housing in 
in Holland, from many areas of the globe. There will be more today, um, which I look forward to. But now I'm going to hand over to the chair of the day, Hald van der uh, Halp. <laughs> van der Werf. Thank you. Before, uh, uh, okay. just, oh, no, no, we yeah. need to do one other thing. Yes. Sorry. Uh, two things. I want to make an announcement. Uh, 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 Yesterday I mentioned about our autonomous life, uh, a, a collaborative project uh, by Maria Pask and uh, uh, Nazimi uh, Kadir, Kadir Nazimi. Uh, uh, it's a joint project uh, of co-production of SCORE and uh, Casco Utre. Today uh, it will be uh, launched in Utre Casco, but the trailer of our autonomous life uh, uh, is shown in the patio here so that you can have a look at it. Also, uh, May Lin, the artist, have a, a, a animation uh, related to social housing, uh, uh, housing to social. Uh, you can also uh, 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 preview it in the pa pa patio. Uh, and lastly, uh, we want to introduce actually uh, the book, uh, which uh, is uh, edited by Andrea Phillips and Marcus Missan, and uh, uh, published by Sternberg Press and SCORE. Uh, it is actually uh, the documentation, and uh, it, uh, it, it documents uh, and uh, expands the research done for the uh, uh, first symposium of actors, agents, attendants, speculations on the uh, cultural organization of civility. And uh, the name of the book is Caring Culture, Art, Architecture, and Politics of Public Health. Uh, please take a look at it. Uh, today it is, buy it, yes. Uh, we have a special prize uh, for today. Okay, uh, this was the announcement, maybe we should uh, hand the microphone to Hab, the chair of the day. Thank you, Fulia. Thank, Thank you, Andrea. Thank you all for being here also.